Six and seven verses I'll read to you. Again, I want to thank Brother Brian and Brother David uh, last week. And you need a little refreshment once in a while. And so they gave it to you. And this morning I'll do the best I can. But we love you and God loves you. And I know the devil's fighting. Uh, you know, we've been through battles before. Hickory Grove didn't get to where it is today without some battles. And Hickory Grove didn't get to where it is today by giving up. Hickory Grove got to where it is today because you fought the devil and because God blessed us and God brought us out. And God's going to bring us out again. And uh, thank God it's worth fighting for. We love you and God loves you so much. I couldn't express. Went to church last Sunday up in Chesapeake, Virginia, uh, where Mandy and John and the kids go. And we really got blessed. It was just a great singing. They sung a couple of the songs. One of the songs they sung was one that uh, uh, Mason and uh, Kelsey sung. And then they sang, sang an old song, a little different type of singing. It's kind of temp contemporary. Most beautiful I ever heard that song sung in my life. He paid it all. And brother, I mean, I got blessed sitting there. And I tell you, people raised their hands. And it was a Christian church. But I believe they moved up a step from somebody back then, you know. That was, it was really great. And I'm glad they found that church. They looked and looked. And uh, <clears throat> they finally found one. And you really felt welcome there in the Spirit of God. These are the writings of Paul I'm going to read to you today. And uh, I know on one side, uh, you know, our heart is heavy. On the other side, we've still got the Lord. And we still got hope. We still got something to live for. And our hearts goes out to the people and to the families because they're our family and they're part of that family of God. But I know one thing as I said a while ago, there's nothing has changed in heaven. It's all still just like it was. Good to have Becky's brother with us this morning. I haven't seen him in a long time. I uh, conducted her mother's funeral a long time ago. And uh, I didn't remember him, didn't recognize him, but we're glad to have you with us today. God bless. <clears throat> For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course, and I have kept the faith. These were Paul's words when he came down and knew, I believe, through the Holy Spirit, that he was coming to the end of his ministry. And when Paul said, I'm ready to be offered. Now if you read this and study on for a little bit, you'll find out that he was talking about the offering that was poured out. And when the sacrifice was laid on the altar, the last thing that was done, they poured out the lesser offering on that sacrifice. What Paul was saying to us and to God, Jesus Christ was a sacrifice that was laid out for us. And now he's coming to the end of life journey. And everything that he had done, every experience that he had had, everything that he had gone through, and everything that God had blessed him with, Paul was saying now, I'm at the end of the journey, and I'm going to pour out this meek offering that I have given to the world. I'm going to pour it out and give it back to the great offering, which is Jesus Christ. And that took humility for a man to do that. All that he'd been through. Paul was not bragging when he said, I have fought a good fight. Actually what Paul meant was, I have fought the good fight. I have fought the good fight. You see there's battles in this world from the time we're born until the time we die. There are some folks today that are fighting battles they'll never win. There are some folks today that are striving and dying for causes that will never come to pass. That's not the good battle to fight. I thought last week as we kept, we didn't keep, Tammy did, on the internet of all that was going on in people's lives here and probably being in Virginia, I found out some of it quicker than you did. We kept a check on Maurice and on Justin and on uh, uh, Mitch called over Ruth about, about the bill and them and we just kept up with everything that was going on. And we knew that that day that 
the little Nolan baby was taken to Children's Hospital in Cincinnati. And I thought from the very moment that little baby was born, it had to fight for its life. It had to put up everything that God instilled within it. All of its natural uh, things that God had given it. All the resistance, all the strength that what it was given in that nine months that it was carried. Immediately had to go to work to fight a fight. It's a fight that we're all praying for that she will win. It's a fight that we're all praying for that God will come on the scene. There are some other folks in our church today that are fighting a fight they've never fought before. They've never been this close. They've never been this, this close uh, to meeting God before. And we're praying that everything within us, they may not win that fight uh, of life here as Paul is coming to the end. But thank God they're going to win the battle. And they're going to win it all. They too can come down to the end of life journey. And so I read this scripture this morning and thought about it this week. And it's on my mind and it wouldn't escape me. I thought about how that myself, after all these years of preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, and I know that my ministry is coming into the twilight zone. I know it's coming into the zone where the shadows are creeping in. I know it by the way I feel and the way that I get around. I know it by the way my mind doesn't work exactly like it used to. I know it by many, many ways. Of all, when I see my birthday on the calendar, I know it. And so I thank God this morning that whenever that time is or when it comes, I can stand with the Apostle Paul and I can say, not that I've, I've fought a good fight, but I can say I have fought the good fight. And brother, I'm telling you this morning, if you know Jesus Christ, if you love the Lord and you belong to God, He belongs to you. And you're in a battle today and you just don't see any hope in sight. It's just darkness as far as you can see. I'm here to tell you today, keep fighting that good fight. Because the battle you're fighting this morning, it's not for wealth or fame. It's not for self-glory. It's not for self-promotion. It's not to get a cause across of the world. It's not to be some great office holder. It's not to see your name in the marquee light. But the battle you're fighting this morning is to be able, when that time comes, you can say, I am now ready to be offered up. Oh, thank God this morning. I'm so glad that we don't have to say, two days ago I was ready, but now I'm not. Uh, not six months ago, at once I knew the Lord, but now I'm ready. I thank God this morning. Uh, folks, God has given us such a blessing and such a, a relationship through the Holy Ghost uh, that we can know things about ourselves that no one else around us knows. We can take things to God about ourselves that no one else needs to know. We can take things that are understandable to anyone in the world. No one would understand it. No matter how close we are. No matter how much we love them or they love us. But oh, praise God this morning through the relationship that we have through the blood of the Jesus Christ and through the power of the Holy Ghost. We can bring them to the Lord and we can lay them in His feet. And praise God there's not a one. No matter how ridiculous that problem might seem to the world. Because it may not be a problem that they're having the one that you're having but thank God you can take it to the Lord and God will never turn you away he'll never scold you he'll never laugh at you he'll never mock you but you're coming into the presence of a holy God thank God this morning I'm glad that Jesus said as the Bible says that in the word of God come boldly before the throne of grace aren't you glad that Paul after fighting the fights after going through the battle after taking the strife after sitting in jail, after being shipwrecked, all that he'd been through for the cause of Christ, he found the moment of time for the bride when he could come into the presence of a holy God and say, Lord, I know I'm about to the end of my journey, but Lord, as I look back upon it, there's one thing above it all that I'm glad this morning. I didn't fight for that cause that I once fought for. I didn't put people in jail because they didn't do like I thought they should anymore. And because on that road to Damascus, when the light shone from heaven, uh, and I was struck down uh, from riding upon that beast, uh, and the light shone around me, and when I sat in that house, uh, in a street cow called Street, and then an eyes came down and anointed me. Oh, thank God. And the Holy Ghost came upon me, and the scales fell from my eyes. Uh, oh, Lord, that time uh, that I took the old jailer after it 
put stripes on me and took me in the back of the prison. I suffered and Silas suffered and we sat there and all of a sudden when we began to sing and we began to pray and the Holy Ghost came down upon us and let us know that everything was going to be alright that I wasn't going to die in that prison because you said I must go to Rome. And what Paul thought about me at the time every Christian that was known of in Rome was captured. They were thrown into captivity. They were taken into the gladiator arena where the lions were waiting for them. And the emperor was set back and the crowd would cheer and they would take great pride and great great pleasure in watching a Christian being thrown to the lions. But if you read on down the Bible says it's Paul said in his very writing that he escaped the lion. That's what he was talking about. Because I went to Rome. But because I was a Roman, they did not throw me to the lion. But thank God you knew that when you saved me and when you brought me out, when you called me to preach, when you gave me the gospel and said take it out to the world. Oh God, you knew that someday I would stand on the streets of Rome and I would preach the Lord Jesus Christ. But I would not be a thrown to the lion because I am a Roman. Oh, thank God this morning. It doesn't matter what you have been. It doesn't matter where you have been. It doesn't matter what you were called. I thank God this morning. If God has called you to stand and proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ, he's going to make a safe way for you to stand and proclaim that gospel. And all of the, the fight that he had, the praise the Lord, when it was over, when it was all done, Paul said, I fought a good fight. Oh yes, we go through trials, we go through troubles, we go through battles. And if you pastor a church for a long, you're going to face some of those battles. I know some of the young preachers here that have gone out to pastor some that, that haven't gone out that not from the church I've got many many a phone call and they would rely upon the length of time that I had been in they thought because I had pastored a few years I knew everything and how to conquer every battle but after a conversation with me they found out that I'm still having battles they look and they don't think I've got any battle you've got a great big crowd you've got a new church and you've got all this but brother let me tell you something I still have battles with the devil but thank God this morning I'll give every ounce of strength I've got to fight this good fight I'm not out this morning passing out bulletins on the street corner I'm trying to get you to do something I'm not on Wall Street trying to overthrow the banks I'm not there, that's not my cause we're going to lose that battle but thank God this morning I'm a Hickory Grove church 